Right now what we're going to think about is the acid-base properties of ions and salts because that's what this slide says and that's what I do. I just do whatever the slide tells me, okay? So let's think about some ions and salts, okay? Let's think about sodium fluoride. It's on the top of my head. Let's, let's think about that. Not at all planned. Okay. So let's take some sodium fluoride. Let's put it into solution. So we got a beaker. We throw some water in there. And by throw, I mean pour. Then we put the uh, sodium fluoride in there. Sodium fluoride is soluble. It's a soluble ion, a compound, so what's it going to do in solution? Dissociate. Dissociate. Yep, so we're going to have some sodium ions and some fluoride ions swimming around. If we were in the lab and we wanted to check if it had any acid-base properties, one thing we can do is just check the pH. Okay. We could uh, you know, use pH paper, we could use pH meter, pH probe. If we did so, we would find that the pH would be greater than seven, depending on how much uh, sodium fluoride we threw in. And by throw, I mean gently placed with goggles on, lab coat, gloves, closed toed shoes, pants, pants. All right, so what's that mean sodium fluoride is? It's a base, it's a base, it's a base. So let's think about why sodium fluoride is a base, and it turns out it has all, everything to do about the fluoride. The fluoride is what causes this solution to be a base, because it turns out fluoride is a base. It's the conjugate base of HF, hydrofluoric acid. So if we think about hydrofluoric acid, it's an acid, so what's it do? Breaking up. Donates. Donates. That's what I was looking for. I heard other things that it does, but it, do it donates to water. All right. Uh, to make hydronium plus fluoride. Now, if you look at the reverse reaction, What's fluoride doing? It's accepting a proton from hydronium to make HF and water. And if it accepts a proton, that's a base. That's what a base is. So fluoride will do that even in the absence of HF. If you throw sodium fluoride into a solution, that's a fluoride ion. So fluoride is the conjugate base. It's going to start acting like a base. And so what do bases do? They accept protons. So they'll bump into some water molecules accept a proton from water to make its conjugate acid, HF. And after uh, water donates that proton to fluoride to make HF, what's left? H. OH. And of course, if we make some extra hydroxide, our pH is going to go up. Now the question is, does every ion compound have acidic or basic properties. So let's think about another one. How about sodium chloride? I don't know, it's off the top of my head. Definitely didn't plan this out. Okay. So let's think about sodium chloride. Probably shouldn't say that on video. Like, yeah, I definitely didn't plan out this lecture. <laughs> Just going off the seat of my pants. Let's figure out what happens. I planned it. I know it's going to happen. Okay, so let's throw some sodium chloride into water. Sodium chloride, as you know, is a soluble ion compound, so just like sodium fluoride, it would dissociate, right? So just like sodium fluoride, it would have sodium ions and fluoride ions. Oh, yeah, chloride, sorry. We got sodium and chloride.
Now chloride is the conjugate base of what? HCl. So when HCl donates a proton, we make hydronium just like HF and have the anion chloride. So there is the potential that chloride would accept a proton from water and make HCl, its conjugate acid, plus hydroxide. And of course, you know, this is us just uh, thinking about this. So maybe a hypothesis about what happens um, based on what we know about acids and bases. Of course, we'd have to experimentally validate this. So we'd have to go in the lab and figure out if chloride does, in fact, produce some hydroxide, right? If we do it into the lab, check the pH of the solution, it turns out the pH would equal, I know what it equals. You're probably thinking like, we don't know, we didn't say how much sodium chloride we put in. I know it would equal seven. What does that mean, sodium chloride is? Neutral. So what does that mean about this hydroxide? It's not making any hydroxide. Sodium chloride does not make a basic solution. So now we need to think about why. Why would fluoride make hydroxide, but chloride wouldn't? One is at equilibrium. And what's, HCl is not at equilibrium. What's that mean? It completely reacts. Okay, not going to set up equilibrium. Irreversible. It's a strong acid, right? HCl is a strong acid, H of weak acid. So what's that mean? If it's irreversible, does, chlor does this reverse reaction happen? No. Nope. Chloride does not accept protons from water or from hydronium or anything. It's not going to make HCl. That HCl bond is never coming back. It's too unstable. Okay? So chloride is never going to make any HCl bonds in solution if it's from an ionic compound. All right? So that's why chloride is <coughs> neutral because this ain't happening. Not happy with that. Red. Not happening. Okay. Chloride is not going to accept any protons. Because HCl is a strong acid. And that's going to even give us a relationship the, uh, between conjugate acids and bases and the fact that uh, the stronger the acid, the weaker its conjugate base, and vice versa. The stronger the base, the weaker its conjugate acid. Okay. <laughs> so since HCl is a strong acid, and the strongest acid, a strong acid, chloride is such a weak base, it's not a base at all. We don't even consider it a base. Okay. And that is uh, illustrated in this. Illustration. Illustrated in this illustration. That's how you, that's how you put words together. Okay. So as you can see, uh, the as the acid strength increases, so here's our strong acids. ACL, H2SO4, nitric, their anions that they will produce are neutral. They're not even uh, basics. Basic, uh, basic compounds, or basic anions, I guess. Everything in the middle, if you're a weak acid, your conjugate is going to be weak as well. So it's going to have both acidic and basic properties. Now here, we don't really worry about um, the uh, sulfide or oxide ions. We just worry about the hydroxide. Okay. So really, uh, the only things we really have to worry about is the uh, conjugate bases of our strong acids. I'm not going to do anything. All right. We even have a nice handy dandy equation to calculate one uh, equilibrium constant from the other. And it, it stems from the Kw. And it turns out that Kw equals Ka times Kb. 
The auto ionization constant for water, Kw equals 1.0 times 10 to negative 14. That's a constant. So since this is constant, at, at constant temperature, one, you know, 25 degrees Celsius, 1.0 times 10 to negative 14, what happens to the uh, Kb if the Ka is increased, if you look at a stronger weak acid? Kb has to decrease. And so that is where you can see that relationship. That K, as the Ka goes up, the acid gets stronger, the Kb has to go down. Okay, so we can put that into words. And um, basically, the stronger the acid, the weaker the strong base, weaker the base. And vice versa. So the weak acids and weak bases in the middle of this table are pretty acidic and basic on both sides. The acids got some acid strength and the base has some basic strength. Um, but as you lean one way, the stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base is. But we can, and this will come in handy, this equation will come in handy when we're trying to figure out uh, the pH of, say, a conjugate base, a weak base. It's the same problem that we just did, but we will have to find out it's usually, or calculate it's Kb, or vice versa, Ka. Yes, sir. Start writing what with a K? Constant with a K. Constant with a K, like, like that, like that is a K. Constant is K. We do use K, use K a lot. Equal rate constant, equilibrium constant. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. 